Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Can't Wait Wednesdays here on the KB Radio Network. Thank you for joining me today as we preview this weekend's upcoming film and television releases. And boy, do we have some releases coming out this weekend. And I have a strange feeling I'm going to miss something along the way. But the ones that I do have jotted down are some very exciting films and TV shows. Well, one TV show that I am excited for and i can't wait uh we have a grand total of six that i have today and i'm not gonna prolong the time let's jump right in to our new releases this week one is not so new but this one here is new and it is on apple tv plus premiering this friday and it is a documentary and normally I don't talk about documentaries too often on this show, but this is an interesting one that has my attention because it's a documentary based on Sidney Poitier, or should I say the late great Sidney Poitier, and it is entitled Sidney. And um, it is directed by Reginald H- Hudlin, who has made uh, some classics in my eyes, House Party, Boomerang, uh, <laughs> The Great White Hype, you know, and on and on. Uh, he has made some very, very good films that I have enjoyed. He also is a comic book writer. He he helped write uh, Black Panther comic books and things of that nature. So um, I'm excited that he's a part of this as a director. It is produced by Ofer Winfrey. So you can't go wrong there when Ofer is involved in a uh, uh, some project of any sort. But basics is really no synopsis to it. It's a documentary, and it's just a portrayal of the life and legacy of Sidney Poitier. So we know we just lost him, uh, what was that, last year? Uh, he passed away. And this is a give your flowers type deal. And Sidney Poitier had done a lot in his life or did a lot should i say throughout his life not just in front of the camera but so much in his activism his civil rights activism and humanity and activism (laughs) you know he did so much and this is a film that is uh uh, set to showcase that so this friday on apple tv plus september the 23rd we get the american documentary film Sydney, so check that out if you will i i definitely will i am so excited for that uh one black filmmaker to another black filmmaker and this black filmmaker for better or worse is is a very successful filmmaker in hollywood now i'm not the biggest fan of tyler perry um and i know that's blasphemy in the black community but i just am not a fan of of his movies but i admire the work that he do if that makes any sense i admire that he controls all of his uh uh, uh, projects you know whether it's the stupid tv shows that he puts on television or the equally stupid movies that he makes with madeira and all that other stuff but he this is his thing he built his own studio he he writes he produces he directs he even stars in a few he does it all himself and i admire that immensely even though i don't like his stuff (laughs) but i still admire him and he has a project a new project that is coming out on Netflix this Friday, September the 23rd, that I must say has my attention. And the reason it has my attention, because this this does not look like a typical Tyler Perry film. Actually, I didn't know Tyler Perry made this movie until after I saw the trailer and, you know, they show who made it or whatever. Or was it during? It, you know, when they say, oh, it's a Tyler Perry film, you know, flashes on the screen. I'm like, what? <laughs> but the name of this film is A Jazz Man Blues. Uh, 
I don't know anybody who's in this film. These look like a bunch of uh, no name actors, at least none that I've, I've I'm familiar with. But uh, but this is a, a period drama, and it's set. It looks like during the time between segregation and slavery or whatever. I don't know. It, it looks it is a period drama. Let's just say that. But the synopsis of the film is follows. An investigation into an unsolved murder unveils a story full of forbidding love, deceit, and a secret. It looks like some type of interracial thing that just not gonna uh uh uh, uh it's not gonna work. Well, it's not really interracial. I think the girl kind of. Pa- I'm just picking this up from the trailer. The girl is very fair, fair skinned, and she can pass as white. And you have this dark complected fella, and he, he, they all fall, they fall in love, but that would mess up the girl's kind of ascension in society or type thing. It, it it looks interesting. I'm just hope it doesn't have Tyler Perryisms in it <laughs> that that's gonna drive me crazy. But it has my attention. I can't wait to watch it. It will be on Netflix. This Friday, September the 23rd, a jazz man's blues. So, um, for all you Tyler Perry fans, and I know there are a plethora of you out there, there you have it. Uh, Our next film is another streaming service film, and it comes out, actually is out today, uh, September the 21st. On Peacock, we have Meet Cute. And it is a romantic comedy starring Pete Davidson. And this is just about as cheesy romantic comedy as you can get. This is like a 90s romantic comedy type film. If you're into that, this looks like it's the film for you. Plus, it involves time travel, which is uh, bananas within his own right. But it looks interesting i love good time travel movies you know i give time travel movies a shot no matter what the premise is or whatever if you involve time travel in it you have my attention and the synopsis of this film is uh it follows a manhattan native named Schiller who discovers a time machine in a nail sh- salon and uses it to continually fix elements of a date she had the previous night. So uh, when I watched the trailer, basically every time she goes back and changes something throughout the date, it, it, it affects the future in a different way. You know, it's like the uh, butterfly effect effect if you will you know you step on a butterfly in the past and it you know you have 14 arms in the future you know what i'm saying it's it's something stupid like that but this looks funny and cute i you know i like pete davis and i like uh the actress i can't think of her name right now but uh she was on the big bang theory uh uh uh, flight attendant she's the voice of heart Harley Quinn in the Harley Quinn animated series on HBO Max. Uh, why is her name escaping me? But anyways, Meet Cute is available right now on Peacock. Check it out if you're in to romantic comedies. Like, I, I guess everybody else. Everybody's into them. You may, people may say that they're not, but they are. <laughs> they are into it. Uh, now, on to a film. This isn't a new release, but it's being re-released, and for some strange, unearthly reason, I am so excited <laughs> for this movie coming back into theaters this Friday, September the 23rd, and it is none other than James Cameron's blockbuster juggernaut from 2009, Avatar. Avatar. Avatar is being re-released in theaters, people, in 3D, in all its glory. Uh, Look, I am so excited for this. For the simple fact, I went to go see Avatar in the theater. And this was the most uncomfortable, exciting experience I ever had in the theater. The reason it was uh, 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 uncomfortable 
was I was sitting at the very bottom. It was packed. It was sold out theater. And I had to sit at the bottom and it was in 3D. So if you look at 3D up close, it will give you a migraine the size of a theater. And it was in IMAX too. So you have to, I have to turn my head and look at the screen and it's in 3D. It, I'm like, I had to get up several times and walk, <laughs> go walk into the hallway and kind of, you know, recalibrate and then walk back in. And it, it was a very, but I wanted to see this movie so bad. And so, uh, and that was the only, only showing I could go see it, you know, cause it was all sold out. But it was exciting because I was loving it despite the fact I was in excruciating pain <laughs> physically watching it. Uh, I love this movie. I don't know why. And I haven't seen it in a while. I'm going to watch it again. I'm probably, I'm, well, I'm going to watch it again. I'm going to the theater to watch it. I want to see it again in IMAX proper. Make sure I can, this before you can reserve seats like you can now you know 2009 you didn't reserve seats it was first come first serve so i'm gonna reserve my seats get good seats so we can sit and watch it in 3d properly as it was intended to be man i cannot wait for this i really can't wait for this and i can't wait for the sequel which comes out in a couple of months uh the way of the water avatar the way of the water i think that's the name of it but uh i am i am really excited for that uh, I believe it comes out in December. So that's why we getting the re-release. So, uh, yeah, if you didn't get the chance back in 2009 to catch it in theaters, I highly recommend you go check it out in theaters. If you can see it in 3D, this is a 3D. You know when you go see 3D films and there's like one or two scenes that's in 3D, the rest of the film ain't, you know, or... Uh, it's not worth the 3D. It's bad post-production 3D quality. This ain't it. This was shot in 3D. It was made purposely for 3D and purposely for the big, biggest screen you can find. IMAX or Screen X, whatever it may be. Uh, please go see it. Because if you just saw it on your television screen, I don't care if you have 70 inches or bigger. You, you can, it doesn't do it justice. Go see it in the theater. I can't wait for this. This is like a second chance in life <laughs> to, to see this again on the big screen because that was one of my biggest regrets when I went and seen it back then. And I never could go back, uh, didn't get the opportunity to go back to see it a uh, second time in theaters the way I wanted to. Plus, I didn't, I didn't take my wife. And I think... She, well, I don't think I know she was mad that I went without her to go see it on screen. Uh, <laughs> so this is my opportunity. Like I said, this is a second chance in life here. This is my opportunity <laughs> to write that wrong. So this Friday in theaters, people. The re-release of the 2009 James Cameron classic blockbuster phenomenon avatar and no not the last airbender but avatar <laughs> so uh that leads us to another release that's coming out this weekend and this film has been getting a lot of buzz for the last couple of months and not in a good way this has been probably the most controversial movie uh you know uh publicity wise i have ever seen Honestly, and it's, it's, and it's like crazy publicity. It's not controversy like scandals and all this other stuff. Well, maybe. I don't know. But actually, there is one. I'm, I'm, I'm lying. <laughs> there is scandals. There, there, yeah, well, let's, well the, don't worry, darling, is the film. Don't worry, darling. And here's all the stuff that I can just think of off the top of my head. You have the director, Olivia Wilde, uh, at the time she started the film, she was, either they were married or they were together. I know they got kids together. She was with Jason Sudeikis, you know, Ted Lasso himself. Uh, apparently, 
throughout the production, she started to have an affair with the star of this film, Harry Styles, and they still together now. At least I think they are. I think they broke up, actually. I think I read that somewhere. But anyway, during the production, uh, they had an affair and ended up getting together to whereas her and Jason Sudeikis broke up. Uh, like I said, they got kids together. While she was uh, at CinemaCon presenting the film, she got served uh, uh, custody papers on stage while she was presenting from Jason Sudeikis. Yeah, it was it was it was it was petty as all get out, but I probably would have did the same thing. I ain't gonna lie. And you had uh, 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 Florence Pugh, uh, the star of this film, uh, the female lead, uh, great actress. She didn't get along with Olivia Wilde. It was very uncomfortable. They had a sex scene in this movie that wasn't uh, uh, choreographed, I guess you could say. It made her uncomfortable, whereas she uh, didn't, uh, you know, wasn't comfortable on set after that. And initially, uh, Shia LaBeouf was cast in this role, but he first it was reported that. Olivia Wilde fired him. This came out of Olivia Wilde's mouth herself that she fired him. But Shia LaBeouf kept receipts. When he released uh, emails and voice messages that stated, not voice, but uh, video that stated um, he quit the film and she was begging for him to come back and all this here. It was just a mess. It was a, a, a complete mess. I don't know how this movie got finished. <laughs> but uh, early on, it's been a lot of Oscar buzz. Everybody has been, oh, right, yeah, this is a surefire uh, best picture nomination and uh, best actors and actresses and all this. Here. Nobody has seen the movie, but all this was coming out. So the movie comes, uh, uh, it premieres at Venice International Film Festival uh, a couple of weeks ago. And critics were mixed. <laughs> they were mixed. And that's putting it kindly. I think they praised Florence Pugh's performance, of course, because she's great in everything. Uh, but the screenplay and Harry Styles' performance and uh, other things were uh, torn apart by the critics. Just being torn apart. And that's sad, bro. I, I, actually, I knew Harry Styles was going to have a bad performance when I saw the trailer because he spoke in like three different accents and I don't know I didn't know if that was part of the movie or that's <laughs> some subline and I don't even know what this movie is about it looks like Stafford Wives mixed with I, I don't know I don't even know what to mix it with but it, it just looks weird but it was interesting it's still interesting to be honest with you I want to see it but at the same time with all this going on and with, I don't think I'm raring to see it. Uh, like I said, it, but it's a stacked cast. You have Florence Pugh, like I said, uh, Harry Styles, Olivia Wilde. Not only does she direct it, but she's in the she cast herself, of course. You have Gemma Chan, you have Nick Kroll, and you have Chris Pine. But I, I don't know, man. It's 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 nothing that I'm a run to go see. But here's the premise. Here's the premise that I found. If it makes sense, because it don't really come together for me. Uh, Alice and Jack Chambers are a young, happy couple in the 1950s, living in the seemingly perfect company town of Victory, California, which has been created and paid for by a mysterious company for which Jack works for. Uh, curiosity about the nature of her husband's work on a secret victory project begins to consume Alice. Cracks then begin to form in their utopian life as her investigation into the project raises tensions within the community. I, like I said, I read that premise and I watch the trailer and I have no idea what this movie is about. <laughs> I have no idea, but it looks great. Um, I think the production design got a lot of praise as well. It looks fantastic. So we'll see. Don't worry, darling. We'll be released in theaters this Friday, September the 23rd. 
So that leads me to a s- television show. And this is our final can't wait of the day. And this is. I wasn't hyped up for this. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I wasn't hyped up for this when they announced it. Even when they released the first teaser trailer for it, I still was kind of like, eh. But for some strange, unearthly reason, when they released the full trailer, I was so in. I was I was all in on Star Wars and or I I am so excited for this show and I don't have to wait long because it is out right now on Disney Plus the first three episodes I am so in for this show um this is of course a prequel to the prequel <laughs> Of Star Wars. And if this is... Well, actually, it's the prequel to the prequel. Yeah, no, it's the prequel. I'm confusing myself. This uh, is based off of Rogue One, which is the prequel to the original Star Wars, A New Hope. So this takes place before Rogue One. And Rogue One is quietly one of my favorite Star Wars films. Uh... You can have your prequels, uh, the new trilogy. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, the original trilogy is the original trilogy. Can't be touched. But uh, this, uh, well, that film, rather, uh, Rogue One, fits right into the original trilogy. In my in my personal view, I absolutely loved Rogue One. And I loved one of the characters from it, which this show is based on, which is Cassian Andor. Uh, uh, who is portrayed by uh, Diego Luna, who returns as Andor in this film and or oh, the TV show, not film, TV show, but it looks like a film. The quality, the money they put into this show, it looks better than some of the Star Wars films of the, of the uh of late. You know, it looks amazing the premise of it begins five years before the events of rogue one the series follows the ensemble cast of characters during the time that a rebel alliance is forming in opposition of the galaxy empire uh, or the galactic empire excuse me uh one of these characters is can uh, cassian andor a thief who becomes a revolutionary and eventually joins the rebellion. Oh man, I can't wait. See, basically, this show is the start of the rebellion. How the rebellion came to be. Uh, so, uh, I, I'm all in on this. It got kind of a spy thriller, uh, action adventure, science fiction. It, it, it just all the little buttons and nooks and crannies that Kevin Reed dives into is right here and i can't wait for this and i don't have to wait long as soon as i press end on this recording i'm going to watch those first three episodes of andor this looks amazing and it has top-notch actors uh filmmakers involved i i can't i can't express to you how excited i am for it i know all my star wars fans out there are excited as well uh Andor premiering. Well, it premiered already on Disney Plus. And we get the first three today of a 12 episode season. And it already, already has been renewed for a second season. So, uh, <laughs> boy, scrap in and enjoy the ride. So, those are your can't waits this week. Uh, which one are you excited for? Uh, I, hey, I'm ready for all of them. I'm ready for all of them. And uh, I don't know. I don't even know which one to. I, I don't know how to choose because I know I can't fit them all in this weekend. I know I can't. But I'm going to try my hardest to squeeze at least three of these in. 
Well, Andor is that's money. You can bank that one. No, Andor is banked in. Uh, ah, I, Avatar, you can bank that one in too. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about Meet Cute. I don't know. That that one may have to get on the back burner. Uh, <laughs> Sydney, I'll probably squeeze that one in too. I, I don't know. I'll I'll wait and see. I don't want to commit to anything. But I am committing to Andor. You can you can you can put money on that one. So which one are you excited for? Let me know. Email the show KB Radio Podcast at gmail.com. You can also let me know on social media. Just look up the KB Radio Network on all social media platforms. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, don't forget about those five star ratings and the reviews. It doesn't cost you a dime to support this show. All you have to do is leave five stars and reviews. It helps the show grow. And I'm trying to grow this show. Uh, Also, share. Share. Share it on your social media. Put it on your wall. Let everybody see that you're listening to the KB Radio Network. Let You know, bring them in. Put a bug in their ear. Hey, you want to listen to this idiot talk about movies? Yeah, come on. Listen to this. Help me out. Help a brother out. (laughs) <laughs> anyway everybody i hope you have a good weekend you have a lot to choose from if you don't feel like leaving the house this week if you don't feel like doing anything special we got a lot of movies and television shows that you can just sit back relax and check out uh maybe even a couple of you can go out to the theater to do so everybody can't wait to speak to you again want you all to know i love you continue to love one another And until we speak again, you all be blessed.